Well, cheers! It's Whiskey Fireside Chat number 51. I'm indoors today. Uh, it's kind of raining. First time to have the fire on inside. I think the summer's over. <laughs> That's okay, I love the fall, I love the winter, I love all seasons, I love living in Canada. Well, shout out first of all for uh, uh, for this lovely whiskey. Actually, I don't know, I haven't really, let me, let me tell you if it's lovely. Well, that's different. Jameson Castmate Revolutionary Brewing Limited Edition. Really smooth, but got a bit of a citrus taste at the end. And uh, thank you to Randy Piffer. I hope I'm saying your name, last name proper, but I, I do know you. <laughs> We've met at many shows. Uh, we also met again at the Makers Rendezvous in Westport a couple weeks ago where all these people gathered to make things, paddles, canoes, and things like that. It was really cool. And I'm driving back and I get out of the parking lot and I see this on my front of my hood of my vehicle. <laughs> and I also saw this. Two bottles, not just one, two. And uh, yeah. Pretty sure it was you, Randy. Pretty sure it was you. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, do a whiskey fireside chat uh, about other people I paddle with, trip with, winter camp with, because I'm the happy camper and I have all these tips and tricks and stuff like that and everybody likes it, but there's people on my trips that know a lot more than I do. One is uh, Tim Foley. He's really experienced and he's a great friend of mine. have been tripping together for many, many years. Very wise man. We call him Gandalf <laughs> on trip. <laughs> He actually owns the Canadian Outdoor Equipment Store, and yeah, I got to know him because I start buying stuff off him. It's a great store. So uh, yeah, and what I thought I'd do is uh, just show his. I, I went through a whole bunch of old stuff the, uh, the other day, and um, I just said, yeah, wow, you know, he hates the camera. <laughs> he hates being on the camera, even though he was a rock star at one time. That's another story. Were you the bass player? Can we please, get a, shot. Quite please, shy please get a shot of all the amazing things I you will. can put so in you your I will, so you should tell me if you're the bass player or lead guitarist. But uh, yeah, uh, they, um, he just is so knowledgeable about certain things out there. And yeah, it's your turn now, Tim, uh, not mine. I'm going to show you off. I know you're going to kill me for this, but you know your stuff, man. Cheers. That is different. And I've got two bottles of them. <laughs> oh, Randy. Tim, what are you doing? Well, this the thing we have the trangy on is not level. But your oil is in like one side of the pan, so I'm trying to shim it so it's a little more level. Tim, are you a perfectionist? Who, me? <laughs> That's a bit better. Fry away. It looks the same as when I started. <laughs> All right, one last. When you said my knife sharp, how do you know your knife sharp? sharp? Well, I always do the hair cutting test. So if you can take hair off your arm with your knife, which I can with my knife, if you can take hair off, for me, that's sharp. Same with the ax. If you can get hair off your, I mean, you gotta be careful while you do it, but if you can get hair off your knife or arm, then you've sharpened your knife well, in my opinion. Should have married you when I had the chance. Oh my God. If I could point out a little marketing moment. This is the top of the Recreational Barrel Works barrel lid. And look, it makes an excellent cutting board. You can keep on your knee and do all your prep work. Uh, we also do have a Trangia multi-disc, which will do the same function, but it's a larger surface. So between the two, you've got all your cutting board, camp cutting board needs met. Insta Flame, great stuff. Comes out of Quebec, uh, made from slash wood, birch, uh, mixed with food grade paraffin. Burns wet or dry. That piece will go for 10 minutes, so you can cut them in half. Uh, in the summer, I normally cut them in half, so you get like five minutes out of each. Fluff up the edges, you can hit it with a fire steel. You don't need to hit it with a flame. Great stuff, Insta Flame. Rather than kind of balancing and then taking a swing or keeping your hand there, you don't ever want to do that. So a better idea is just get another little piece of wood. Stick. That can do the holding. You keep your hand out of the way. And then you can chop pieces finer like that. So what did I do wrong with the tarp? It's not a major problem, but you, you need to seam seal this tarp when you buy it. Like when you get it, it comes with seam sealer and you should seam seal your seam, which you did not do. Nylon treated with silicone. Uh, nylon tarps are also treated with polyurethane. 
but by treating with uh, silicone you get a much stronger material strength in the fabric. Uh, but silicone is very slick, so if you seam seal it before you sew it, uh, the silicone is so slick that that seam sealant won't adhere properly. So for a tarp with the greatest material strength, which, I mean, you saw today the wind was whipping in here and this thing is still fully intact, no problem. So when you get the greatest material strength is you sew it first, but then it requires you to manually seam seal once you get the tarp. But it's no biggie, you do it once, set it up outside, it takes like 10-15 minutes, seam seal your tarp and then you're good to go. And that way you get a waterproof tarp that is as strong as it can possibly be. You well dealt and look at them. What I have here are two uh, Maxpedition bottle holders. But what's cool with these is uh, the amount of gear you can store in these. This is a standard bottle holder with my squishy cup, uh, squishy cup silicone. So this is silicone, great, because it packs up small. You can squish it and it packs up nice and small. Out like this, uh, put hot stuff in it, you won't get burned. They're, that's a cool product. Uh, just because if it glances or something, you can go off and hit, that's where you get the evac thing, into your legs. Whereas if you get down on your knees and you miss or it glances off, it'll go into the ground before it hits you. Two types of teeth here. So there's cutting teeth and raking teeth, they're called. So uh, the way this works, the cutting teeth, which are these guys, will cut into the wood. And then these teeth, the rakers, will kind of scrape out what's called the kerf or mm. the line where the saw is sawing, will rake out the sawdust and bits that the cutting teeth have cut. Uh, what we're, uh, I thought we were filming here was the false bottom, which is an additional piece at the bottom of the stove, which uh, achieves a couple things. It, um, first off, in terms of the burn, it, it raises the wood up and you can see there's holes there. So you get airflow underneath so um, it increases the burn rate and it clean uh, burns you get a better burn like it, it more ash there's less kind of unburnt pieces uh, and it just burns hotter and better uh, and then also it protects the bottom the floor of your stove so that I mean you can burn straight onto the bottom of the floor of the stove but over the course of years you know that metal is heating and contracting heating and contracting so it can theoretically over time you can burn out the bottom of your stove bottom so yeah, false bottoms. If you have a stove, uh, have a look at those false bottoms. You'll do your stove a favor and you'll have a better fire in your stove. It's nice to have wool, but for me in, in winter stuff, the wool pants are a necessity. So we've been out here taking pictures and stuff. So at some points I've been, you know, kneeling. The thing about wool pants, like even if you get in the snow, you get you know, snow all, if you're leaning, leaning down taking pictures, or if you're chopping wood, or you're getting down, you get snow all over your pants. Uh, first, like I don't feel that. I don't feel it. Like I don't feel wet on the inside. And then my body heat will dry this within a matter of you know 10-15 minutes. There'll be no snow on there anymore. I don't feel wet. It doesn't penetrate through and it dries. I've never found anything as good as a solid pair of wool pants in the winter, especially if you have to be in the snow. Like I say. And now, what were you were telling us? We we cannot drink anything cold. What was that? Well, you're not supposed to drink uh, cold water because it, co it will coagulate the hot cheese in your stomach and basically put a cheese ball in your stomach, which is probably not a good idea. So you need to drink either uh, warm tea or a cool wine. We are, we are opting for the cool wine option this evening. Is it a cool wine if it says ladies night out? Tim, what yes. are you doing? Uh, cleaning up the breakfast dishes with a natural pot scrubber. Doesn't get moldy, doesn't get uh, bacteria build up, 100% biodegradable, can't beat it. Fresh pine scent. I think spark directors are not really, I tend not to pack one in. Um, I just find they create, unless it's the fall, like we're saying, unless it's fall, uh, it's very dry, there's a lot of leaf cover, um, you know, maybe then, or if it's pouring rain, maybe then, but you know, in terms of embers and stuff landing on your tent, that actually has a lot to do with how you run your stove in terms of the type of wood you're burning, you know, how hot you're running it, how much oxygen you're letting hit it. Like you can, you can control what comes out of the top of the pipe stack a lot by, you know, how open, how much air is getting to it, if the door is open or not, 
you know, the species of wood makes a difference too so it's uh, calming very calming and it's invigorating the uh, the cold weather as long as you keep moving it's it's quite invigorating and uh, you don't really see anybody else out here you can have the place to yourself and you get to wear a good-looking hat yes that as well yes I know it's getting late but something really significant just happened uh, when the lights when the battery does not have sufficient power to power that light at that power level rather than slowly dimming over time it's stepped so when your light steps down and you feel the the, the power drops to the next level that indicates that the power the, the sorry the battery does not have enough power to sustain that power level so it drops a level so it's actually a, a I think it's a better system so when your lights dropping levels you know your battery is running out of, of power rather than it slowly dimming and not really being aware of where it's at so anyways the battery had powering the lantern last night with this 3500 milliamp battery uh, the one we had tonight was 2600 milliamps which is almost a thousand milliamps less so as a result we stepped down to the second power level I don't know what time it is but significantly earlier than last night which makes sense it's not the batteries not have as much capacity so I have just replaced that battery with another battery and now we're back up to the level we were at well all I know is it went dark and <laughs> Tim fixed it it's true Tim's great deck of cards in case mr. Callan's company gets a little dull I, I won these at a at a bar once. I was lucky and won a deck of Sleeman playing cards at uh, at the Comedy Bar in Toronto. Is this when wonder. you were a rock star? No. No? Do you want to explain to everybody when you were a rock star? <laughs> I've got a little screwdriver. You're, you're ignoring the rock star thing. Yeah, I am, yeah. Waterproof, storm-proof matches. Did you have those when you played in the band? <laughs> waterproof case. I'm not, uh, I'm not going down that road. <laughs> Tim, what are you doing? I said you have a new flashlight that yes. you don't know. I don't know this brand either. So, <coughs> excuse me. I suggest you doing some field testing. So for me, my flashlight, you know, I throw it on rocks. Just throw it on a rock. You want a mini you know, on the ground. Oh, what are you doing? My flashlight. Huh? <laughs> you want a stump? Regular I have to go for regular tea. Do you want tea, Mike? Yeah, I will. You know. Yeah. Well, it still works. Just throw in the water. Really? Oh, yeah. That should be waterproof. You know, I like torture test it a bit. See if it stands up. Pretty good on the impact. All right. Hey, man, that's, that's just what I do. I mean, I'm not saying you okay. have to. What, what is it? I don't even, like, what does it say on it? Well, I don't think we're going to... We won't pimp them out yet till it passes the test. Oh, that's right. Okay, right. right. We're, about, we're about to give up on that portage, and it's only a 320, and we're like, uh, and then Ashley said, next year we're going to a lodge. And you said... No, and it can't be too easy. You have to, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, but you have to break a sweat, and you have, it has to be uncomfortable, you have to be like dying to get that pack in the boat off of you at the end of it, or it's not, you know... It's not a real trip if there's not some pain involved, in my opinion. Hopefully not too much, but it can't be too cushy. You can uh, check this out. There's a lot of headroom in here. So this all oh, that's out. nice. Good headroom in here. Yeah, the other one, you know, the, the roof is like here. Right four inches above your nose. So that, this is not claustrophobic at all? No. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's my... This is the test run on it, so we'll see. Then. Who, who makes it? Integral Tactical. Oh, so it is like a military... It's totally military. It's made in Canada, yeah. Mil mil spec is all a triple laminate material, four season. Yeah, it's real, real deal military stuff. <laughs> Come on now, show it. Show it. Come on now, show what you got. It's not meant to be, <laughs> not meant to be worn on. No, no. <laughs> Come on. Just a little peek. All right, all right. <laughs> my helmet liner. Don't you have one of these, helmet liner? No. It's good for like cycling or construction helmet, or whatever kind of helmet. But yeah, it's not meant to be worn as a toque. You look like a something out of a Monty Python movie. If... Whoa! Camelot, woo! 
works very well under hats or uh, helmets. All right, so that'll stay in the log now. So now, uh, I guess my knife is sharp, but now you've got a surface here where you can run your knife along without worrying about it moving around or do you move your knife around on this, get her good and sharp. This is sharp, which is why I'm not doing it. Uh, but that's a good little tip. Keeps it in place for you. Uh, Tim, what are you doing? Well, I'm gonna be brushing my teeth, but uh, the product of choice is actually something you wouldn't think of. Rather than toothpaste, we have good old Dr. Bronner's soap. If you're not familiar with Dr. Bronner's soap, it's all uh, organic, fair trade. They have a very interesting corporate culture. Uh, it's good stuff. And what's cool is you can use it for everything. Like I bring this on a trip, it gets used for the dishes, gets used to wash your face, if you have to wash the dog. You're gonna get the trucks. No, no, I've done this a million times. I don't swallow it. You swallow your toothpaste? No. No, well, me neither. Foamed up good. Sometimes it foams up too much, actually. What are we taking pictures of? Uh, really? Product plug? Made what? in Finland. What is it? Kupilka. Made in Finland. Yeah. Uh, interesting, interesting uh, product. It's a bio material. Half uh, wood fibers, half thermoplastic. Um, so is it BPA free? You can put it in the dishwasher. Weren't you supposed to do all this, man? Yeah, but you know more about it. I think I said uh, I didn't want to end up giving the product plug. All right, Tim's filming. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, um, want us to go, I don't know, okay. Kai. My spice rack opened. Smells good. And my cinnamon. <laughs> Cinnamon came out as finishing. Turns out it makes uh, sparks in the fire. Tim? Yes. What are you doing? Uh, making a uh, sp <laughs> makeshift spatula. Seeing as uh, I guess I didn't uh, fully appreciate that. What, why are you stuff. having to do that, Tim? Well, again, I. Actually, this one's probably on me. Kitchen stuff should include a spatula, so my bad on that Don't one. worry, we don't need a spatula when we make pancakes or cook up fish or have eggs. We don't need a spatula for that. Right, actually. So you're going to carve a spatula? Uh, a rough one, yeah. That's, that's the game plan. We, we're only out here for four days. Uh, <laughs> the breakfast is nearly ready. It shouldn't take too long. Uh-oh. What's the next process? Uh, I'm gonna just make that a little thinner on the front edge here. You wanna use one of my knives because it's sharp? <laughs> no, thanks. thanks for the offer, but I think I'll pass. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay, it's day two, <laughs> and Tim's still over here whittling away. I think, uh, Actually, no, it's only been like four minutes since I've been here before. Look at that. The eggs are still cooking. Okay, good, good. Well, let's, let's try this. Round out the handle a bit more, but... Hey, let's give that a go. He's going to try it! Everybody, push crap, Tim, holy! I don't know, man. Pretty, pretty raw. Oh! Oh! oh. Hey, look at that! Oh! oh. What do you think, Tim? Are you proud of yourself? Oh uh, well, so far so good. Yep. Les Stroud, Joe Robinette, eat, <laughs> eat your hat. Don't edit that in. <laughs> no. Look at this video. <laughs> Why do you have sunglasses on, Tim? 
I, I like the, the rose-colored lens. It uh, puts a happy shine on everything. Tim, try it. Tell, tell me what we think. This is Irish whiskey, not scotch. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. It's nice. Fruity. Smooth. Hmm. Citrusy. He's full. Hints of fruit. Full of it. You don't know how to do. You don't know what you're talking about. Hints of starfruit. <laughs> Pomegranate? <laughs> Just like they grow in Ireland. <laughs> it's why is it not a mall? I called him mall and he got all upset with me today. Uh well the mall actually has a sledge uh hammer edge on the back, so you can pound wedges or other metal implements. Uh that's what defines the mall. If it's merely for splitting, then it would be a splitting axe. So with the Grand Sports Axe, there's actually four models of splitting axes. Uh, one of which is a mall, three of which are, sorry, four of which are actually uh, splitting axes. Large splitting axe with a 27 inch handle, large splitting axe with a 31 inch handle, small splitting axe, and a splitting hatchet. Do you work at a shop that sells axes or something I, like I that? May, I have yes, no I may. clue what you're yes, talking yes. about. <laughs> Does it cut wood? Yes, I like it. <laughs> so. You better put that mall away, it's dangerous. It's not a mall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this match is brought to you by the Canadian Outdoor Equipment Company. <laughs> www.canadianoutdoorequipment.com